to my office. Been expecting you. Who says that? Bon? I don't know. What's up with the bros and welcome to today's video. Today's video we're going to be talking about a gimbal that we recently purchased which is this right here. We'll be unboxing this and getting into it in just a moment. Uh, what, the camera I'm going to be using for today for the gimbal is the uh, Mark III, uh, the 5D EOS. It is the DSLR camera that um, Canon makes. So if you have one of these then we'll be able to test this out so you won't have to do any testing at home. Uh, but this, the reason why I'm using this camera is because this camera and this lens together is one of the heaviest setups that we have right now so I want to use the heaviest setups that way we have a ballpark idea of how to get this squared away so we can use that for the camera that you're watching this video on which is the EOS R6 that is the Canon that's the Canon camera that we normally use for most of our candid shots on the channel uh, and then I believe yours is the other one which is the the Rebel T3i. The Rebel T3i, yeah. So we'll have a ballpark idea to basically go from the heaviest to the lightest after that. So we'll try and explain that as well as we go through it. Um, but yeah, before we get too far in either of these videos, uh, let's go ahead and pray for today's video. Then we'll get squared away with all the stuff that we're doing because we're going to do the unboxing first and then figure out how this goes onto that. It'll be a fun time and hopefully you guys will learn something from it because that's the point of this video. And well, depending upon which channel you're watching it on, the channel in general. So let's pray. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to uh, bless us to be able to purchase this. I thank you for watching over us and keeping us safe as we've done other videos in the past. And I pray that you'd watch over us and keep us safe as we continue using both of these things for you and your glory and for more better content for obviously for your glory, like I just said. Anyway, um, again, I want to thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for blessing the channel. Bless the people watching and watch over everyone and keep everyone safe that is participating in any facet of what we're doing. In your holy and precious name I pray. Amen. So, let's get right into the video. I've been running low on patience Got no creativity, I'm keeping people waiting Look, mama's asking when I'm dropping what I wrote last year But my ADD is kicking, I don't think it's really clear Who I'm trying to be, man, I'm feeling grown now Wifey cooking in the kitchen, smelling really good now I know all that glitter isn't gold They treat me like a joke They listen to a couple songs and they think that Alright, so for the time being, since this camera is not going to be used What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set this to the side uh, Right over here real quickly And then we're going to take a look at this because I want to go ahead and unbox this real quickly um, I will be folding it this way so uh, I'll just unbox it and drag it out so that way you guys can see uh, what it looks like some stuff like that and we'll go over some stuff uh, whenever you first open it it looks like we have this foam board which I'm probably gonna leave it sits right there on top of the equipment and then there's this there's this one here too I'm not sure if this one's useful as well, um, so we'll, I'll probably just hang on to both of them for the time being, uh, but it looks like it's packaged up nicely, so that's good. Uh, then there is a operation manual, or no, it's a disclaimer and warning, which is what this is. It basically tells you, um, well, disclaimer and warning, basically the, the normal stuff like, hey, don't use this when your hands are wet or if it electrocutes you while your hands are wet then it was your fault to begin with kind of thing. Uh, one thing that we haven't mentioned so far on camera is that this is the Crane 4 model of whatever, however you pronounce this company properly. I'll have to go figure out how to pronounce it properly. Uh, the spelling for the company is Z-H-I-Y-U-N. Um, I'll have that on screen for you as well so you can take a look at that. and. I think that this is going to be a really decent setup because you're able to strap this in. I've noticed that with some of the stuff that GoPro does, like the GoPro Karma case that came with the GoPro Karma that we have some time back, we never did a review on it because we didn't seem it was we, we didn't deem it necessary at the time. Um, but GoPro doesn't have their stuff strapped in where it's like Velcro. It's normally just like an elastic strap that you slide stuff underneath or um, no straps at all. But depending upon how it's packaged. Like the Karma case is packaged like super tight. It's not necessary. So this is an interesting, it's an interesting take to the packing for technology. Just thought I'd mention that in case someone's interested in it. 
So um, I'm gonna bring you guys a little bit closer so we can talk about this and take a look at it a little bit more in depth so that way you guys aren't just staring at me sitting in a chair for 20 minutes. So I'm um, gonna go ahead and start by unpacking this. This is the actual, um, the actual gimbal itself. Um, it's got a little rubber piece at the bottom for its charging port which is kind of nice, a little protective bit. So like if we're recording somewhere where it's dusty or something, you can just throw that over it to make sure that there's no grit or anything that gets in it, which I really like. Uh, there's a couple of things that come along with this. There is the pan access motor, which is this bottom one, which is what you're connected to grip wise. Uh, this is the one that you would be using to go from left to right. Uh, this one back here is the roll access motor. So think of it as a rotation portion this is the one that rotates and then this one right here is your tilt access motor that would be anything that goes forward or backwards um, that is super necessary for what you're doing uh, basically whenever you're like like say if i had it like this and i'm tilting it forward like this it would keep the camera level as it tilts rather than rather than just continuing it along with like a like a normal um, tripod or whatever. Uh, something else that comes along with this is a micro tripod, uh, which is really nice, like compared to the other one that we have. I don't know if I still have it anywhere in like quick, quick accessibility, uh, but this has rubber along this side, which is good for grip. Uh, it's designed specifically to be um, stuck into this at the threads at the bottom which is common with most, most products like this, uh, which also means that we could mount this to a tripod as well, which is pretty cool um, for extended reach or what, whatnot. So basically you put that in like that and then you can just open it up for stationary stuff which is awesome. So this is the standard model, actually. There is a pro model that you can order as well. Um, I just, for the money that this was, it was, I believe, 669 that's what this was and the the pro one was 700 something I, I, i'll have the numbers on screen after i go back and look at it as well uh, but the biggest difference that come along that comes along with the pro versus the standard version is there is a um there's a it would be right here on this side right here there's threads on either side which is why this kind of resembles a like rc car style grip um, this is where the uh, elbow mount would go. Not, it sounds weird, but think of it like this, where you put your wrist on it. But it's designed for, it's like, it's called an elbow because it looks like an elbow. Uh, and then this side right here is where you would put the other portion where it sits further out so you can have stuff. It's a separate system and you can adjust it. It's super fancy. I might look to see if they offer the adapter separately moving forward, because I think for the kind of content that we do, that would be interesting to have to get more, more extension to it. Uh, but obviously for just this video by itself, it shouldn't be necessary. So we'll probably transgress into the portion that we're all been waiting for, which is the assimilation part. So I can show you guys how this works and how to put it together so you can get your cameras on again gimbal at home. For this channel specifically, we're not going to go into a full in-depth how this works, how that works, just because obviously we're doing more of a product review for this channel. However, if you are more interested in the usage, how to set this up, the correct plugins, yada, 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 rather than just the finished product and the clips of a comparison, uh, then be sure to go check out our production channel, the WBP page. That is the separate entity that we're working on growing. So not only will you help us out here, but also help us out there in the future. So that would help us in advance. But apart from that, we are going to talk about um, just basically what comes in this because we need that for both channels. So we'll do that now. So um, this is how, whenever I opened it, this is how it looked. I'm not sure if this is every box. Obviously, whenever you open it up, you'll figure it out. Uh, but there are three components that come in this pack over here. I believe this is going to be the stuff to be able to be put on the camera and also onto the gimbal so you can mount it separately. And then there's stuff over here as well. Uh, these are your, um, your Allen keys. There's also this little thing that looks like the if you've ever seen the Shell Station logo, that's what it looks like. That's the best way to, to, to describe it. Uh, it comes with another mount. It's a little bit thicker and there's a little bit more of a ridge to it. So I'm not sure how this is applicable just yet. I'll have to take a look at that yet. 
All right, so I don't know if you can hear that audibly, but the the gimbal is basically like shaking to notify me that this camera set up the way they have it, it doesn't like it. So there is a screen here. It's got four different things. It's got mode, balance, info, and settings. What you wanna do is you wanna hit settings and then hit auto calibration. Then once you hit a start calibrating and then it's going to like basically shake the camera. And then it'll shake it the opposite direction. Take it up, level it out, take it back down. Now it's buzzing really bad because it's telling me that it needs to be in my hand. And then it should be already calibrated for this camera. Now there's a couple things that come along with this cam with this gimbal specifically. If you see right here, there's a, a little trigger. You can actually change modes with the trigger by clicking it and it changes the, uh, the label of stuff there's like little icons next to the camera portion, which you saw a couple minutes ago. Uh, the modes that it has set up is pan follow. It has a lock feature, which apparently, which just locks the camera where it's at. So that would be your tripod mode. There's the follow feature. There's the POV feature. There's a go feature, a vortex feature, and a portrait feature. Um, because this does have a sliding axis right here where my camera, or, or where my fingers are at on the camera, you can also undo this and then slide it right here at the very top to get that camera angle that everyone's looking for on for TikTok, that aspect ratio that you're looking for uh, for TikTok videos and stuff like that. So that'll be something cool that we can mess around with in the future. Um, we'll have that set up for that. Uh, but something else cool about this is there's this little thumb module thing which controls all of the rotators. And it's basically set up to where down is down goes up and up goes down. And that basically moves it in like a stationary thing. So basically if we have if we have something set up to where I'm following Andrew on a racetrack or something, I can put this on a tripod and basically hold it and try and get the motors set up properly to be able to follow him and then change direction and all that stuff, which is pretty decent. Obviously, you have to change the motor settings for the different pace that you're trying to record for, um, but that's what it shows you on that side as well. So just to give you a good perspective of how this works as a whole, which is pretty cool altogether. So with the trigger function at the very front, uh, one click takes you between different modes. It gives you the ability to change, like I mentioned before, j just for a handheld portion. Uh, this little slide bar right here at the bottom as well, it allows you to change the uh, ISO inside of the camera, which I really like, so you can do it on the fly. Uh, two clicks, I'm not sure, I can't remember what two clicks does. One, two. Uh, well, that's three clicks. This takes it into selfie mode. This is for all the people at home that are interested in the vlogging style setup where you can basically, uh, well, if this camera wasn't so flipping heavy, you would have it set up to like this where you can be like, what's up guys, welcome to the channel, yada, yada, yada. You know how that works. You know those people, those people that do those videos. So that would be the setup for that. So you'd have that for that. Also, I wouldn't recommend using this camera for it even though that looks, uh, that might look cool. I don't know how that, yeah. Yep, that's interesting. Anyway, so that's a cool little feature that they added just so they're not just reaching one specific style or one specific, um, well, customer group. It's, it's an entity that everyone can enjoy as a whole. So that's pretty cool to take into consideration. Okay. So it might be hard to see with all of the display stuff that's on the screen as of right now, uh, but there's a little red button right here at the bottom where my thumb's at, right there next to the white button and, and that little joystick thing uh, that basically moves the camera around. If you hit that red button, I'll let you uh, f look at the camera so that way you can see it happen. But if you do like a one click, it'll make it focus. So now, well, apart from the fact that it's extremely bright out there, it'll focus the camera for you just by clicking it once then now you're ready to record whatever you're trying to get over there. If 
this should work. I'm not sure if this is gonna work with this camera specifically because there's a flip feature uh, where you can switch it from picture to video. All right, so it looks like it won't do it with this camera, but um, with the R6 body, so if you're working with any of the R6, 5, 7 that now exists now, uh, it'll work with that. I tested that earlier um, off camera just to make sure I had a ballpark idea of what this looks like, um, but it won't work with this one, and it's probably, probably just because um, of the flip feature where you can switch it between both modes. I'll have to do some more research on it to confirm that, um, but I won't know until I do that. So that'll be something interesting to take a look at and just a little bit or something like that. So we'll have that squared away for you. We're gonna use the 250 as an example of a moving object. So we can use this as an, in a practical sense. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to record twice, once with this and then once with my hands. And then we'll, we'll, we'll also try and do the, um, the linear feature for like a, uh, for like TikTok or something like that. So, so for all the people out there that might want to do TikTok content, uh, you'll be, we'll be able to test that for you guys at home. So we'll be able to do that for you. And then, um, yeah, that'll be cool. So we'll do that real quickly. And um, we're gonna do a pan, which is essentially just me taking the camera and following along like this. Uh, we'll be doing a follow along, which would basically be me doing this while following the, the vehicle. And then the last one that we'll do is the one I just mentioned before, well, turn sideways. So just a little bit of a compare and contrast real quickly. I do think that this gimbal will be perfect for the slower type content that we plan on doing in the future. Uh, something that's more honed into like weddings per se, or something that's a little bit more sentimental just to grasp the concept. However, I do think that faster paced content like photography for um, Lakeview Speedway or Florence Motor Speedway or stuff like that, uh, that we've done in the past would be better without the gimbal, just because you need that mobility, that torso turn. And I'm sure that after doing a lot of um, practicing with the gimbal itself you could probably get to the point where you could do that but just for right now for time's sake I think it'd be better to split that content up based off of the certain scenarios that we're going to be recording um, but again I think that the product as a whole is perfect for what we need moving forward and it's exactly what we're going to need to improve some of the content that we didn't want shaky so Obviously, drop your comments, your concerns, your comparing and contrasting. Obviously, if you have a product like this and there's something that I did miss, let me know. I'll try and do a video to uh, cover uh, all the bases that I may have missed. And obviously, if you're watching this on the Wheeler Bros channel and you miss some stuff or you don't know how to install your own, then go check out the WBP page and we do a full explanation of everything. It's about a 35 minute video without adding this clip into it. So it might be a little bit longer, but it's extensive and it's good for what you need for that product. But Obviously, if you watched it on the WBP page and I got everything, then that's awesome. If not, let me know, and I'll try and fix that. Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. If you made it this far, uh, go ahead and type in the bottom gumball because that's the comedy version of what we're doing. I believe I said that accidentally while I was recording this video, so it just kind of happened that way. So if you made it this far, say gumball. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you supporting the video and clicking on it in the first place. If you do enjoy, like the video. It helps out the channel, and who knows, you might be recommending it for someone else in the future. Anyway, we'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great one. Shout out my homies, we gon' pop for them trophies yeah, Like they can't hold me, thinking God, I've been chosen Go through the motions, all them times, I was hopeless Now we the coldest Look, I've been tryna tell y'all since like 1-3 Got my soul up in the trunk, and my God got the key Spirit tryna tell